right very quickly through the contents of the box so here in the top layer you have all your tools which is pretty decent all the hardware some filament samples the laser engraver head really excited to test that looks really solid there is the second shroud or case for the dual extruder i guess we probably need to replace that if we want to use a dual like color extruder power leads um there is a bunch of hardware here that we're probably going to be needing and of course the glass bed and the usual instructions manual which is as any of these printers a translation that sometimes isn't very useful on the second level you have the actual printer uh, it comes pre-assembled i would say uh, so you have the, the main gantry uh, fully uh, detached from the base, as you can see. Uh, it looks pretty solid. I'm, I'm quite impressed with the, the build quality. And let me show you how it comes. So it comes pre-assembled. You see that the whole gantry is pre-assembled. And you probably just need to put a few bolts in to get it uh, linked to the bed. Moving on to the main assemble, uh, it's pretty straightforward. It comes with this very good quality uh, hex tool, all the bolts, and you just need to put four in one side and four in the other. So you see these blue plates here, they have four holes. Uh, you, you notice one of them is, is uh, it's not round, so you can adjust a little bit. And of course, make sure you adjust the voltage of your printer to suit your, your main supply. It came with a European plug. I'm in UK, so I won't be using that. Should be easy to sort. Just get a, a main lead elsewhere. Now, just an interesting comparison here. So this is the glass bed from a Ender 3 that I have. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty much like one centimeter wider in all the uh, di directions but it does print uh, in the full area so 255 by 255 now one important step during the assembly is that you probably want to use a square and make sure the gantry is uh, as square as possible with the base as you can see here mine isn't so that will cause some print issues as you, as you can expect uh, of course with the bed leveling you can adjust it a little bit but ideally you want to make the frame as squared as possible so yeah try to adjust all the bolts so you can have uh, the most square gantry as possible in both directions and one of the downsides from the design when it comes pre-assembled this way is that you don't seem to have an adjustment in the uh, rotation of the y-axis this way so yeah you probably need to force it a little bit lose a few bolts and try to get it uh, square the other problem that i found you see uh, because i had to pull the the z axis uh, as high as possible the extruder hits the synchronization belts. It is a dual Z axis printer. I will show you in a second. So it does collapse with the synchronization belt. Other than that, the build quality of the printer is quite impressive. Uh, the aluminum bed looks really decent. The adjusting knobs are okay. Uh, the springs are as usual, a little bit uh, too soft but you can replace that quite easily. You have all these uh, parts in metal. Here, I, it looks like a MK8 extruder and you have like a, a sensor for the bed leveling. Again, the quality is, is really impressive. All these blue parts you see, they're metal, they're not plastic. 
this corrugated tube here is not like the best but I, th I think it, it, it keeps everything organized and tidy here is the filament run out sensor which is also a good advantage in the, in the hardware um, there is this easy extruder I think they call it the Titan extruder which is, is also really convenient it's really easy to load and unload filament really good so yeah, the hardware of the printer is, is really impressive. So the final bits of the single extruder assembly is just connecting the, the electrical bits. So everything is labeled. So you have the Z1 here for the Z motor. And because you have two Z motors, you have Z2 in the other end. So just plug this, those two connectors in. And for the main one, you have these big ribbon connector just plug everything well everything goes through these connectors so just this plug connects everything else which is really convenient so it, it only takes a few minutes to get the whole printer assembled ready to print in the uh, single extruder and then you power up in the back of the printer So yeah, this is the interface, it's going to be new for me, let me see. Some firmware information here, info, right, looks like my, um, my hot end is not picking up very correctly. Tools, preheat. See, it's picking up minus 15. Uh, so I reckon there is a problem somewhere. Yeah, it's gonna get the mean temperature. Um, I'll double check the connections. I think there's a problem with the thermistor or any of the connections. Because minus 15 doesn't seem a sensible value. Well, happily for my case, it was just a, a bad connection. So I've pressed that ribbon a little bit firmer and I got a good reading from the thermistor. So it didn't take any, any effort from my end. So again, double check all your connections. Everything seems to be doing good now. Uh, see the steps goes in increment of two degrees apparently there's the bed i'll keep it warming up the clips for the glass bed is also really interesting see they are really low profile and they they have like a knob so you can you can press them firmly if you need to it's a very interesting design i haven't seen that before and you have four of them which helps to keep the, the bed flat instead of having that concave shape that sometimes you struggle with glass beds temperature wise I think we, we're reaching the targets very quick just before we start printing I'm just gonna show a little bit more of the details you have a dual uh, gantry Y axis which it's also good to keep the the bed stable and again you have a dual z rod with a dual motor and a synchronizing belt so yeah there is a motor in one end and another one in the other end which is really good i think it helps with some uh, issues that the cheapest ones usually struggle so off to the level and see how it works Okay, we've got some instructions there. You press the auto. Let's see what the printer will do. This might take a while, so I will speed the video up a little bit. Um, the instructions on the screen says uh, if the difference is 0 0.5 uh, 
absolute between the points you should re-level the bed so let's see it's just out of the box i didn't adjust any any knob so i'm expecting it to be all over the place um, but yeah well, let, let's see how it, how it goes but yeah you don't need to do anything you see the the machine does everything automatically it measures it in 16 positions so a four by four uh, matrix not sure if you can tell by the camera but the the machine seems a lot quieter than the other ones that I have okay so we just finished it and as you can see the numbers are way more than the recommended so I'm gonna be using the old paper method I'm just gonna use uh, the screen here to help me control the the movement of the bed so if you go to bed sorry level and get manual you can uh, command the, the head to be somewhere in these five positions So it's, it, it helps if you want to do a manual leveling and get the um, head closer to the bed. I noticed there is no Z switch. So I think all the control is done by the, the sensor in the, in the printer head. And then as usual, you, know, you just get a piece of paper and do the adjustment as you can see. Mine's a little bit off, so I'll do the manual adjustment now. So I've done some research on how the level works for these machines. I think it's the same as the XY2. So first you need to, of course, level it manually. You know, the usual paper method just to get it closer to the nozzle. Once you, you're happy with that, you then do the, the auto uh, calibration and it will pick up the adjustment. I'm not, I'm not gonna uh, show everything now because it will take a while again. So if I skip to the end of the auto leveling, you see now uh, the values are much closer to each other within the tolerance that they, they say in the screen, 0 0.5, which seems a little bit too much, but I'll, I'll just stick to it. And if you put it back to Z offset, it will get to the middle of the bed again. There is no Z axis, so it, it doesn't really know. Uh, what is the Z apart from the sensor then what you need to do you stick a piece of paper in there you see it's about I don't know maybe two millimeters off the bed and then you need to adjust your offset uh, I seem to have to do this every time I power the printer on and off it's not saving the Z offset so uh, I, I don't know if this is how it should be or if there's a problem with saving that into the EEPROM but once you have the, the nozzle uh, grubbing the paper, you, know, you, you just do the, the micro steps there and get everything uh, according to your, your usual feeling of the paper. So when you start getting a little bit of a, a resistance uh, in the paper. to lose you get set z as zero it doesn't beep it doesn't do anything but that's how it should do i've seen this complaint in, in another video then you put back and then you can start printing i'm just gonna use uh, one of the files we have in the sd card so the calibration cube and that should give you uh, a correct uh, Z offset. So I'm just starting the print. Yeah, I did. I didn't slice this G code, so there's no purge. There's 
nothing there but it seems to be printing we'll see come back in a few minutes So this is actually the first print I've done with it. Uh, it is the flexible lizard that comes in the SD card. Uh, again, I didn't slice it, I didn't do anything. It's just uh, a sample in the SD card already. And let's see how it goes. It, it should take about eight hours, I think. Uh, I'll, I'm gonna leave it overnight. Uh, I had some issues with the leveling and the adhesion, so hopefully it will completed by tomorrow morning uh, I did use the uh, sample filament on purpose because I knew it wouldn't be enough just to test the the sensor and that's the message so it seems to be working okay you just need to unload the old filament put the new one in very straightforward and you can use this E uh, up and down so e1 of course we only have one extruder for the moment uh, it it can pull or push your filament to help with the the loading and if you put it down and see it's gonna be extruding so you purge uh, the old filament and a little bit of the new so you, you pretty much clean your nozzle and Hotel, this is a dual extruder printer and I'm using just a single one. I'm changing color just to give a, a nice effect, I think, in the lizard. Uh, but yeah, it's still using the single the single extruder. It's just taking advantage of these, these poles and switching filament. And off it goes. No problems, apparently. It seems to be printing in the, in the right layer. So... I'll come back in another few hours. Right, so this is the morning of the next day. It took 10 hours, 37 minutes to complete the print. Uh, the filament ran out again and I, I switched back to the, the yellow. It gave really a, a nice effect on, on the little lizard three colored lizard as you can see uh, these articulated uh, pieces sometimes they are, they are struggle to keep uh, to the bed I seem to lose one, one piece there but other than that the, the print is still quite stuck to the bed so yeah the bed seems to have a very very good adhesion originally uh, you see a bit of a string in here again it wasn't a, a file that I sliced it myself, so I don't know what the parameters are. Uh, I will be build something quick and dirty, so I'll test the slicer myself. Again, just a final look in the, the result. Can easily fix that just with a bit of a glue it's just one section but as you can see the other parts are really stuck i wonder if these will fade off as you start using it it seems to be leaving a little bit of a mark in the in the texture but the first print is definitely well stuck to the bed A little bit more of details of the strings here. A nice lizard. So uh, I've also printed the calibration cube that comes in the SD file. Uh, and what you see printing there in the background is a file that I sliced myself using Cura. I am a Mac user. So this is a, a bit of a downside. I'll probably going to be struggling with the um, existing uh, software they provided it seems to be all windows based for the lazy engraver so i might be needing to find another alternative uh, i just use the profile that you currently have in cura 
from the XY2 Pro, which seems to be the, the same dimensions. So let's just see how it turns up in the end. So this is the final result of the, the profile and the, the file I sliced myself. Uh, not a bad, bad print overall. As you can see, it's still very stuck to the bed. Uh, but yeah, there are some flaws, especially here in the top layer. So there's probably a, a, a bit of a polishing to do in my uh, slicing profile, which I'll be doing in the next few days. And hopefully I'll get this dialed in. But that was it. Thank you very much for watching. And see you next time.